Um, but good afternoon. My name is Mallory Martin Ferguson, and I serve as the director um, for the Graduate Student and Program Consultation Services Office, um, also known as GSPECS. And we are here to kind of present information related to Rackham resources um, and information about emergency funding for you today. Jemaya, would you like to introduce your, your role uh, in particular uh, in relation to the office? Yes. Hi, everybody. I'm Jemaya Barrett. I am the Conflict Resolution and Academic Relations Specialist for the Graduate Student Program Consultation Services Office. Um, so I do a variety of things. Um, hopefully you all feel comfortable reaching out to us and maybe we'll meet one-on-one -on -one or maybe in a group setting, depending on what workshops you may be a part of. So I'm excited to get to know you all and present this information. Excellent, thank you. So to start, we wanted to just get a sense of kind of where people were at in thinking about this type of information that we're offering in this session today, but also your thoughts um, as you approach your first um, kind of year of, of graduate school. Um, so let me see, sorry here, folks. Um, get back to my slideshow. Um, I wanted to get my, let me stop sharing for a second. My Zoom poll was kind of not working. So segue, poll questions. <laughs> I'll do that now without sharing the presentation because it's not necessarily relevant. Um, but we wanted to ask um, in particular kind of what folks were um, thinking about or as they were approaching um, graduate school, what are some things that are kind of on your mind? And let me see, we have a lot of polls loaded in here. So I wanna make sure that I get, um, the correct information here. Okay. So let's see. I don't know if folks may be able to answer this, but the next uh, poll will be open for you to answer. So one of the things that we wanted to ask about was as you think about graduate school, kind of entering into this new space, which are some areas that you were excited about? So we have meeting new people, moving to a new place, learning new things and advancing your research. Generally, when we have asked this of people, um, we get answers all across the board that meeting new people is really excited. I'm excited about moving to a new place, being at a different institution, perhaps being in a different country when I'm approaching, you know, kind of this different uh, aspect of my study, um, but then also advancing my research. That could be kind of something that's really exciting or something that could be a little bit nerve wracking, kind of depending on um, where you are and, and um, kind of your, your current experiences. So that's kind of an example of the question. That first one, um, I think was just a little bit of a, a blip. So I'm gonna launch now the second question, which is, as you think about graduate school, what are the areas that you're nervous about? So here you'll see some of those same answers, right? Meeting new people, moving to a new place, learning new things and advancing my research. So some of the things that folks might be excited about, conversely, could also be things that you're nervous about. And I'll give people just a minute to kind of answer for themselves um, what might be that area uh, in particular that they're nervous about. Got about 90% of people participated, which is awesome. I'll just give it five more seconds. All right, fantastic. So let's see the results. Um, so what people shared, are folks able to see this? Thumbs up or a, a emoji reaction or comment? Thank you, I got a thumbs up. Um, so this is what we got from the group. As you think about graduate school, what are the areas you are nervous about? Meeting new people, moving to a new place, kind of you know similar, although moving to a new place um, takes you know kind of, uh, precedence here in kind of that numerical breakdown, um, advancing my research, maybe not necessarily learning new things. You all are graduate students. This is your kind of bread and butter, so to speak. This is the work that you do is kind of that innovation, that research, and that learning. So learning new things might not be a worry, but it's really about meeting new people, moving to a new place, learning maybe new things kind of in that place. And that's what we're hoping to really offer and share with you today is what are some of those kind of resources and information in this new place, the University of Michigan again, that you could access. So I have one more question here I want to um, ask folks. So if you were to occur, run into, you know, or a problem were to occur um, during the course of your academic study, it could be personally or academically, um, where might you go? Where might you go to kind of resolve or seek support for that situation? Would you go to your advisor? Would you go to your department chair or program staff? 
perhaps a family member, friend or other support, or maybe some campus resources that you're kind of gathering information about or you're learning about kind of as you explore some of the grad school 101 resources. Awesome, I'll give people, again, another 10 seconds, about 80% of the people present have participated. Okay, I'll end it there. So here's what the group kind of collectively said is that primarily your advisor might be the person that you initially go to or would go to first if you encountered a problem, whether academic or personal in graduate school. You may also rely on your network of family and friends. That might be a network that you have in Michigan, are developing in Michigan, are relying on, you know, maybe from a distance. Um, campus resources, of course, um, at which Michigan there is, you know, kind of a, a, a litany of resources. It's just maybe finding, you know, the right one for you at that right time. Um, but then maybe also department chair or program staff. So our hope for you today is to really get a sense of all of these areas and entities are places you can go for support and help. Um, this office in particular, the Graduate Student and Program Consultation Services Office, can be that first place to say, I want to talk to my advisor about this, but I'm not sure how, or here's what's happening for me. Like, what do you think I should do? Or what are some resources that would be kind of the most helpful? Um, because graduate school is exciting. It is nerve wracking and it's wonderful that um, you're here to be a part of it. That's why there are some support resources that we have developed um, to assist kind of in your uh, in your work moving forward. So thank you for the patience with the, the polling questions um, and I'll pass it now over to Jemiah. So what does G-SPECS, what does our office do? So we do student support faculty and staff consultations and resolution services, right? But to be a little bit more specific, we provide a neutral and safe environment to talk. We listen to concerns and complaints of students, as well as we refer individuals to appropriate campus resources. We mediate conflicts and we advocate for a fair process. And then lastly, we do advise on university policy and procedure. And that kind of goes back into our faculty and staff consultation. So we do service students, but we also do assist programs. So we do a lot of consultation on university policy and our procedures. So how can you contact us? So you can contact us if you have a problem or a conflict involving the university and do not know where to go to resolve it as well as you can feel your concerns are not being heard. So if you're going across different, maybe departments or areas and you feel your concerns aren't being heard, you can always come to us, as well as if you need information about policies and procedures that are affecting you. Another situation is if you need help to resolve or mediate a dispute with faculty or administrative staff. And then lastly, if you believe your rights have been violated or you have not been given due process. So some further examples we wanted to offer related to that, because um, it can be helpful to hear information. Oh, there's this office I can go to. Here's some of the things they can assist with. But having not yet maybe been in graduate school at this level or at Michigan, there might be some context that would be helpful to provide. And so we thought it was important to let you know generally what are some examples that come their way to Jemiah and myself to kind of help um, address. So people mentioned their advisor is maybe being like the point person they would go to if there was an issue or concern. Um, and sometimes the issue or concern may be related to that advisor or a PI in a lab that you're working. Not necessarily negative or harmful, but there just might be some miscommunication. There might be lack of feedback, too much feedback, um, or unclear expectations as you're kind of navigating this new uh, and emerging relationship. That could also be related to mentoring concerns, feeling like you have really great intellectual mentoring, that you have really strong connection to the research, but maybe you have questions about like what to do next for professional development. If you're a master's student, what are going to be some of the next steps for me in my career as a PhD student approaching, you know, their defense? What are some things I should be thinking about? What are conferences and areas I should have been, you know, mindful of attending maybe earlier on in my, in my career? So those are all types of different maybe relationship concerns that may come up. Um, academic progress or coursework concerns. Um, if it ever kind of comes to your attention that maybe there's some milestones or some benchmarks or there's just questions around 
reaching those milestones, seeking some support in reaching those milestones. Those are uh, times that you can reach out not only to your advisor and department, but certainly G-Specs to kind of talk through uh, progress and coursework concerns. Um, lab settings. So we recognize that not all graduate students maybe are in uh, lab settings and that different kind of disciplines um, have different kind of group settings and, um, you know, even research expectations. Um, but the lab can be a really interesting place. One, because it's bringing together a lot of different people <laughs> in kind of a smaller space, doing maybe very distinct projects, <clears throat> but all working together under kind of one advisor or mentor. And so that can just bring up some different dynamics as a new person entering the lab or as someone leaves the lab, those can all kind of shift and change. Um, or you may have problems or concerns with safety or protocols. And so those would be things that maybe we could consult and talk about, problem solve a way to enter into the conversation or give you some insight uh, and information around kind of, you know, university and academic policy around some of those concerns. Where can you report a concern or can you report a concern anonymously, et cetera. Um, access to and eligibility for emergency funding. We'll talk about this a lot more um, later, but we do consult with students um, who are kind of experiencing maybe financial issues or concerns um, and are in, are in need of some funds. And so we would be able to talk with you about how to access the Rackham Emergency Fund, um, what would be maybe a helpful framing for your application, or if there's kind of a larger need for funding um, that falls outside of the scope of Rackham, how can we help connect you to other university resources in an effort to kind of get some of those needs met um, for you? And then, of course, maybe not lastly, but ever present is just working to help address mental or physical health concerns and our mental health and well-being. Graduate school, as I mentioned, is exciting and potentially nerve wracking. And with it can come just some different um, stressors that you're navigating, some different skills that you're wanting to develop in navigating this different environment. And if you have questions about those resources or how to kind of advocate for further support or to even understand that support, this would be a great place to kind of, um, you know, reach out to and do some initial uh, kind of conversation. So now specifically, we wanted to talk then about the relevant Rackham resources um, and kind of their intersection with the GSPECs office in particular. So um, I'll turn it over to Jemiah to talk um, most specifically about the emergency funds. All right, so as Rackham graduate students, you do have access to the Rackham Emergency Funds. Um, so an award can go up to $2,500 for eligible expenses. Um, we do have a website, so you can kind of look at the criteria. So if you're wondering or just curious, um, you can always explore it for yourself. As master students, you're eligible for one award throughout your time in your program. As PhD students, you're eligible for two awards throughout your time within your program. Jemiah, would you be able to maybe offer like an example of an award or an application that is typically seen or submitted? Um, in like yes. Um, so a good, I will say we've seen a number of applications um, because of weather conditions. So I know earlier this spring semester, um, earlier summer, there were incidents where the weather conditions may be caused loss of electricity. Um, so therefore students like refrigerators were out of commission, maybe they needed a generator, um, things of the sort where they needed support or needed to replenish their supplies. They can always ask for emergency funds. Why? Because obviously students don't plan for natural disasters. So that is an emergency. Another good example of an emergency um, that comes through our applications are unexpected dental bills or things that weren't planned for. So of course it does require that you upload a budget as well as if possible, any receipts or documentation for um, the need for those awards. Um, but most of the time, it's just an opportunity for students to express, hey, an emergency has happened. This is why I need this support. And this is what the support will be going to. Excellent. Perfect. Um, Another area in which we do kind of some direct, um, you know, resource work and problem solving with students um, is related to accommodations for graduate student employees with disabilities, I should say. Um, that is something that is kind of a designated um, duty of our office. The reason I differentiate between student employees um, and students is that you may be both, <laughs> depending upon your role. 
um, and what is uh, kind of currently happening for you in your program. So if there is a need for an academic accommodation, typically that's thought of as an accommodation in the classroom. You're entering into the classroom and there's a barrier, right, that needs to kind of be addressed. Um, or there's a timing issue with, you know, a chronic condition you may have. Um, anything related to kind of your, your classroom work, especially initially as a, a, a first or second year um, graduate student, um, would typically be addressed with SSD. And that is the services, <laughs> excuse me, for students with disabilities office on campus. I apologize. <clears throat> I've talked way more today than I typically do. And my voice is feeling it. So SSD is a great kind of resource uh, and entity to kind of reach out to in that regard. If as a student, then you find yourself also having an employment term, right, or an employment contract, typically for our graduate student instructors, GSIs or GSSAs, those are things that could be formally um, requested and sought out through Rackham, through this office. There's an online form in which you submit give information about the condition, the nature of the disability, and the requested accommodations. Um, that then kind of comes to me in my role as the resolution officer, and we work in collaboration with your program and maybe even faculty of instruction to implement those uh, reasonable accommodations. Um, the same applies to GSRAs, even though GSRAs don't fall in the same kind of contract category for employment. As GSIs and GSSAs, we kind of treat that student employment position in the same vein. And so the process is maintained to kind of request those um, through Rackham. Because a GSI role can change term to term, your condition might not change or the nature of your impairment or disability may not change. Um, but because the role does change, we do ask that student employees submit an accommodation request term by term. So in the fall, and in the winter, um, just to make sure that we're having the most accurate and helpful information for that reasonable accommodation. More about that can be found on our website, the forms, the information, and then of course you can always consult uh, with Jemaya or myself about that in particular, not only for maybe um, the academic accommodations, you know, liaising with SSD, but also for the employment accommodations. So the two other areas um, of resources that we wanted to make sure that were mentioned today are about leave of absence and then also parental accommodation. Um, so the leave of absence policy, this um, is particularly relevant for PhD students. Um, Rackham does have a continuous enrollment policy. And so unless you're on a leave of absence, you need to be enrolled in classes. Um, that's not the case for master's students. And so stepping away from study for master's students is much more of a departmental and advising conversation. Um, but if you ever find yourself kind of considering that as a master's student, you know, please reach out um, either to us or to your program to kind of talk through the implications of that. Um, but for our PhD students, the leave of absence policies um, are related to kind of four different areas, a personal leave, a medical leave, family necessity or dependent care leave, and then military service. Um, each of these kind of start out as a term, and then the medical, family necessity, or certainly the military service, you know, can kind of be extended into future terms, depending upon, you know, kind of the need to be away um, from study. There's an online kind of system where students can request a leave of absence. They seek out departmental um, kind of approval and awareness of that leave. And then for the medical leave in particular, um, supplemental medical documentation um, is required just to ensure that there's been a healthcare provider who has kind of signed off and agreed um, that stepping away from study would be recommended for a student. Um, the medical leave of absence carries forward your student health insurance coverage. If you, you know, um, would like to do so, you can decline to have that happen. Um, but generally, while out on a medical leave, having your health care coverage is really important. Um, so that's something that kind of carries forward um, that is a little bit unique uh, and different than the personal leaves and the family necessity uh, and military service. The leave of absence is really stepping away from study, so there's no expectation for any academic work during that time. And then when you feel, you know, ready to return or have, you know, gotten your needs met in other ways, um, requesting to return to active study and working with your program for that kind of um, re-entry plan. Um, so anytime you have a question about that, want to explore the implications of that, or just thinking like this is good to have in the future if and when things come up. Again, please keep that in mind um, to consult or problem solve uh, with us around. 
And then lastly, um, the parental accommodation policy is something that the GSPEX office kind of oversees. Um, this is not a leave, but it is an accommodation period for reduced academic expectations. So if you find yourself either as a birth parent or partner or an adoptive parent or partner, um, you would be eligible for six to eight weeks um, of that reduced academic expectation. Um, that would need to be, again, a form filled out, submitted to Rackham, signed off on by your program. Um, and for the leaves and also the parental accommodation policy, we ensure that that time is added back to your degree. So it extends your time to degree. And we have kind of a notation system to do that internally. So sometimes students get worried, like, if I have to take this time away, if I step away, I'm going to, you know, be kind of further um, accelerated on my time to degree. And that's not the case. You get that time back because we recognize that you were away <laughs> doing other things, right? That you stepped away from those studies or had reduced expectation for study during that time. And again, both parents and partners um, as kind of Rackham students would be eligible um, for that parental accommodation kind of policy component. And again, questions, concerns, you can talk to your advisor, department, GSPECS is always here to be a sounding board as well. All right, so talking about some workshop offerings. So we have a couple of workshops that we offer and that are available for you all. So we have navigating difficult conversations. So as you're going into your graduate career, you're going to come across a couple of situations where you're going to stump, you're going to be stumped. Maybe you're going to be wondering how can I have this really difficult conversation? And we offer this workshop as an opportunity for you to be able to kind of navigate some of those difficult conversations and use some really good suggestions on how to connect. Secondly, we have a workshop called Communicating Across Difference. So goal being you recognize and you're able to acknowledge the differences that you're having with the people around you, but you want to still be able to um, show appreciation for those differences and put the emphasis on being able to communicate well. And then we have listening circle conversations. Um, a good example of a listening circle is just an opportunity where staff members from our office will facilitate students being able to have a safe space to communicate with one another, share their concerns, whether it's specific to their program. Um, Michigan, I mean, some of you all might be commuting or um, moving to a whole brand new place, right? Some of you all mentioned it in your poll. So it's good to have peers that you can speak with and people that you can feel comfortable talking with. So our office is willing and has done a number of different facilitations of listening circle conversations. And then we have our virtual office hours. So going into our fall semester, we offer virtual office hours on Mondays and Wednesdays through the term. So normally they're about an hour long. Um, you can always sign up to meet with us individually, get on our calendars. But if it's last minute and you're like, hey, I need to talk to someone, you can always stop by our virtual office hours and you can find the link in times on the weekly Rackham Student Newsletter. Awesome. So that was us in a nutshell, very comprehensive <laughs> and quick presentation. Um, here's how you can reach out to us. So there is this Rackham GSPECS email um, that kind of goes to the office itself. My information is included there as is Jemiah's. Um, what I'll do here is stop the share. And then what I, I'm going to add to the chat is just the link also that we have on our webpage on the Rackham website that you can submit what we call an intake form or request a meeting with us. And so the virtual office hours are a great way. Stopping by in person, if you're here you know, for fall welcome and just wanna get a sense of the Rackham building and where our office is, you're always more than welcome to do that. Uh, but then sometimes like as a need arises or something kind of pops up during your time as a graduate student, you can always know that the Rackham webpage is a place to just say like, I'm gonna just reach out submit this intake form, let folks know what I'm wanting to talk about, some times that might work for me. And then one of our staff will work to be in touch with you, um, you know, within 24 hours, if not, if not sooner. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there and then see kind of what's coming in on the chat or if there's questions or just kind of things that um, you're left with as a result of some of the uh, information and resources that Jemiah and I have presented.
Okay, nothing in the chat. The group is still pondering. Actually, I I think there (laughs) is. There is the question of, for the leave of absence, have you had students apply to take care of aging parents? So, (laughs) Mallory. Yes, yes. Um, So that would be family um, necessity or dependent care, uh, leave of absence, absolutely. Um, Depending on the nature of the care, that would be, I think, a conversation with us around um, kind of coverage, right? Is that person living with you? Are you leaving to care for that person in another place? Um, uh, But yes, absolutely. For that type of leave, medical documentation is not required, but a rationale. So to say, I'm leaving to care for this person for this reason uh, is really kind of the only information that's needed. But absolutely, folks have um, stepped away to take care of that. That's a reality, I think, of where we may be in our lives um, and with our family situation. Yeah. Um, I see another one about a financial advisor on campus, um, and I would say generally, no. However, (laughs) there's lots of people who have some financial knowledge and information who could be um, of benefit to you. When it comes to Rackham, there's the Rackham Finance and Fellowships team. So if there's questions related to kind of uh, any funding that you're receiving directly from Rackham, um, a fellowship term, or just general like scholarship and fellowship opportunities, um, that would be kind of a great uh, a great resource. The Office of Financial Aid has kind of um, you know financial counselors available to talk through the aid and loan process for students. Um, Jemaya and I can be kind of a good first start to kind of talk through what is the financial concern or issue. Um, and then there's this great resource on campus um, called the Center for Education of Women, CEW Plus. They work with many more than just, um, you know, female identified students. That's where the plus uh, kind of comes in. But they do offer some financial counseling and financial wellness workshops, of one of which I think Jemaya is uh, kind of collaborating on to do a presentation in the fall. And so those are some few resources that would kind of work to maybe address um, some financial questions, but there's not kind of a a role necessarily of a financial advisor, maybe in the way that um, you're thinking about. Okay, perfect. Um, And there's a question about the Rackham newsletter and I'm gonna attempt to answer this question, but Paul, Kylie and Danielle, I'll defer to you. Um, That's something that I think upon your arrival and matriculation, you are automatically signed up for. It comes out every Friday and it will have information about kind of news from Rackham students, things to look forward to as far as events, and then information about ongoing scholarship and fellowship opportunities. So I don't think that there's any action that you need to do for that, um, but it is something that you can um, have a look out for um, on Fridays um, when the term begins. Yeah, just to add to that, the newsletter, you're automatically loaded into that and you will start getting updates in August. So you might miss a couple right now. I just had a conversation with the communications team about it. So they don't typically start the cycle for new students uh, until the second week of August. So sit tight, it will be there. Anything else that's kind of coming to mind, general kind of thoughts, reactions, um, or kind of comments um, about Rackham resources or the role that our office can help play to support you during your time? Okay, perfect. Um, So there was a question about um, PhD stipend taxes. Um, I'll have to ask that question. I don't have it on the top of my head. Um, So Mohammed, if you wanted to email with me kind of specifically, we could um, kind of work to gather that information for you. And then there was another question about any healthcare related disputes. that may arise with a healthcare provider, I would say it might depend upon the nature of the dispute, Um, but there is the benefits office um, at the university, right, that helps oversee kind of the grad care coordination and benefits itself. And then there's also UHS, our university health service office, which is where the majority of students 
um, maybe get some of their care or where you can access some services based on the health fee that you pay. Um, they both have staff who can serve as primary contacts if there's insurance questions um, or kind of concerns or disputes related to um, maybe a healthcare need or a resulting bill or explanation of benefits, uh, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Well, you have our information. We look forward to emailing with you um, if and at all helpful at any point in the future. Um, we hope to see folks at Fall Welcome here in a few short weeks. Um, we'll have a table. And so if you want to stop by and say hi, we would very much appreciate that. Um, congratulations on um, your upcoming graduate career at the University of Michigan. We're so thrilled that you are here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Paul, Danielle, Kylie, I'll turn it over to you if there's any housekeeping things, but we appreciate your time and attention. All right. Thanks, everyone. A couple housekeeping items. Number one, question in the room about this recording. Uh, this recording will go to our communications team, and it'll take one to two weeks to process, sometimes a lot sooner, but that's just uh, the timeline. So look for it in the Grad School 101 portal. For those who are in Grad School 101, you will get the recording and any resources you need with it. Also, uh, Kylie put in the chat the the registra not registration, the evaluation link to this session. Please fill it out. We love to get feedback uh, about this session, about future sessions. Our Grad School 101 workshops are based on the input you get, we get from students. So please take a moment to help us out and fill it out. Um, thank you so much. And we will see you at our next Grad School 101 session.